first speaker uh, this morning is Tammy Lister. Thank you. So by the very nature of being around so long in product terms, WordPress has kind of tangled itself in interesting experience knots. This is part of all products, but it's something to recognize and work on iterating, untangling, and not just accepting what we have is all there should be. With each feature comes weight, comes a tangle. Projects chase bugs like squirrels, and you drive into spirals of stuck experiences as a result of this. Flows that hitch and trap and trip those up that are just wanting to get a task done. The result is really tangled yarn and drop stitches. If you kind of ignore tangled yarn, if you're a knitter or if you're doing, you can't actually knit with that. You can't actually function. And if it gets really so tangled, you have to snap it. So it's really, really important that we work on this. So, can I ask you a question? Do you remember the first ever time that you used WordPress? What about the first click? The first post? The first time you learned how to use tags or you learned how to use categories? What about the discovery of how to add a theme or how to add an option or, or a plugin or just some really simple things that you take for granted now? Well, likely you can't remember the year unless you have a really good memory or it's really, really, uh, you can't remember where you were, what you were exactly doing. You might have that vague memory and it depends on how long ago that you did this. But that experience is going to be faded. There is something about looking back. So when you do that, there's these rose-tinted glasses of simplicity. Everything just seems easier. And in a way, it probably was. If you look at early WordPress, it was easier because, well, you could actually do less. So by that, it was easier. And if you were starting to think about how you do a simple task such as write a post, after all, our roots are in blogging, so that should be fairly easy, right? But if you think of the path to just write a post, the long route, the way that you have to know things, this is kind of a problem because how many presumed things are there along the way? How are you going to know that you have to publish? How are you going to know where to go for that post? How are you going to know about tags? What assumptions are we making with the product? To start thinking about really how we can simplify and get entangled, there needs to be a bit of consideration of what the daily activities are going to be and how is WordPress really being used so that it can then be improved. What are our issues? What lurks in that tangled ball of yarn? How complicated is the experience of WordPress? Now, there's going to be some good news. We can all improve things, but we have to be realistic and we have to admit how tangled our yarn is. So it's almost a quaint term by used by many, and I know that I've used it myself in the past. We talk of the WordPress way, and we use that term, as if it's an unspoken but known rule book, and that it's going to be okay. This is one of the foundation issues. There is an awful lot of presumed knowledge within our product. From the words we use to the paths and interactions we expect to just make sense to someone which, in nobody's surprise, doesn't actually make sense unless you know the WordPress way. For example, think about the multiple places for menus and widgets. Why can't we just have one place where we do these things? Simplest, also, we have to be careful, doesn't mean easiest. If we have this presumed knowledge, we both expect someone to use it, but we might be judging what the simplest and easiest route is. If we know what is in the kitchen drawer, for example, we're going to be able to find the tea strainer. But if we actually don't know where the drawer is, and we actually don't know where the kitchen is, we're probably not going to have much success finding a tea strainer. One bigger problem is what even is WordPress? How many people actually interact with it and they think it's their theme or their plugin that they're using? Which is to them, that is WordPress to them. 
However, when we talk about things like call and we use those terms, we don't include those. We don't think about those modified and completely different experiences often. The experience is far from just WordPress admin. It's that tangled, it's layered. The bones are lost under a completely different surface for so many that interact on a daily basis. Never mind adding in headless or any other combinations or things or even the simplest thing of an admin color way. It really is added confusion. And in a world where you can combine anything, the base experience just isn't the same for everyone. And the result is often a confusing, often precarious experience. A big problem of extensibility is opening to inconsistency by allowing different buttons, different toggles, and different styling. This creates a patchwork and a confusing interface that befuddles and amuses even the most experienced users. How do you start when everything is changing or different? You can't even maybe follow a tutorial because it doesn't look like the thing that you have in front of you. It's like trying to use a product whose experience is constantly morphing. And nobody, nobody likes unexpected experiences. You shouldn't need a map to actually write a post. As I noted earlier, a large issue is simply the passage of time and how long WordPress has been around. This comes in many forms, from it being built for desktop first to backwards compatibility, trying to keep supporting what once was. The experience is web, but more and more it's needing to be app-like. It exists in that kind of messy middle, static, little bit stuck. There are ways to do things, and multiple ways to do things, and this really, really confuses. This means that that learning curve is fast and mountainous to start off using. So in all our options, we've created something called a paradox of choice, which is simply, you just can't choose because there's too many options. It's a space for those wishing to move are stuck, and everything is always on. We've surfaced so many of the options, we're actually overloaded by the sheer number of them. Too many places are available to do the same thing. And what might have been thought of as helpful by just surfacing it, often confuses. For example, this shows how many different ways there are to get to media, and there's quite a few. There are some foundational problems with the interface itself that we really can ignore as a problem. And one of the biggest of these is there's no clear start, no obvious way. We have a lot of repeating interfaces, the same elements used over and over again, even on the same page, which creates these seas of components. There are simply too many ways to do the same thing. Beyond that, you have to hunt for what you need, and it's not where you need it. Users, quite frankly, often lost. So one of the great examples of experience that I often refer to is supermarkets. I know that doesn't sound very exciting, but bear with me a little bit. If you think of a supermarket, there is a plan, a flow that you get carried along, and pretty much that applies to any supermarket that you go to. This isn't, of course, a mistake. It's actually by design. The way that finding works, you can go to other supermarkets and you know what to expect. It's soothing. You know where the aisles are and you know the flow. You don't have to learn new models of moving around that space. You know where to go. The paths are pretty much the same, even across different worlds as well. Similar products are grouped so easily that you get what you need. You flow through the experience and you end up then checking out at the end. Signs clearly mark the way above and if you need anything, it's pretty clear what you're going to get. But if we were to look at the amounts of clicks and moves and the walks around WordPress, and if we were to think of these as miles or our activity loops, we would really have reached our walking target pretty quickly just trying to do the simplest of tasks. Because we hide so many things, we make so many long interface journeys. Really bringing things closer, that's where what we really, the essence of need to do. It's kind of tiring how much we have to navigate around to get even the simplest of tasks done at this point. 
So I'm going to go into some kind of design exercises, and you don't have to be designed to do this, of how we can really start thinking about untangling this experience yarn, because it's really, really worth untangling. And we can start to maybe think about things a little bit differently. So, really simple task. What if we remove all color from the admin experience? I'm not suggesting we do this, so we ship it in a release. By doing this, we get to see everything. What does it look like? When you do this, you get to see the hierarchy or the lack of. You get to see what is the predominant focus. And it's a really great way of start considering what is important, what could matter, and where are our paths, and what do we want to be our paths. So if you take this dashboard screen, this is a lot if you take the color away. Where do I go from here? The primary action is to customize my site or save a draft. But is that the thing that we want to be the first thing that Spawn does? This screen has a kind of lots of directions, but no particularly clear direction, no hierarchy. It's a lot of the same. What about this? That publish button is really calling to me. Um, you can see it quite faint on this screen, but it, it's there and it stands out. But there's a lot of the sameness and everything's kind of the same level. And by taking the color away, we start to think about what we are doing with our hierarchy here. Maps also help us to see the flows, where things join and how they connect. By charting our experience with seas, we can begin to see where our sea monsters and our shipwrecks are. This is the media flow. This is the media flow about a few months ago, but this is still, and it's very faint on the screen, I do apologize, but this is pretty intense as a flow. Um, here, you can really see the complexity of it when you start mapping out and you start seeing everything. Story arcs are probably one of the simplest forms, and I would encourage you all to start exploring these. There is a link here of Donna Litchow's book. So what they are, if you think about a movie or you think about it, it's literally where you go up, you have the exposition, the exciting incident, and then you have a crisis, and then you go down to the end. I'm really starting to think about these and think about these in terms of the product and the experience as actually the story. Because we're telling a story as people are interacting and using this. If we think of the story arcs in WordPress, there's a need to plot these and just start thinking of that experience, both to know how people are using it and also so we can change the interface as well. One thing I'd like to note when you're thinking about story arcs is that the crisis is really, really important. If you think of all the good movies and all the good stories, they all have a crisis. You know, they have a will they, won't they moment. Are they going to survive? That is really, really important to this. So having a, a tension within an interface is something to explore. A really easy exercise to do is look at a screen and think about what can be distilled, what can be taken away, and you do not have to be a designer to do this. Uh, I call these franken marks, which is basically just sticking things together and then hope, seeing what happens. Uh, what is extra, and how far back can you actually take it? Here's the dashboard. Now, what is actually needed on this dashboard? What is going to be the first action? And I've explored some different things here, but you can do lots more of these. What of these links is, is or isn't needed? What could be surfacing? What could we change? Could we move things around so we have editing at the top, maybe? Another point to consider is what state has someone reached this screen? Is all of this important to everyone at the same time and their journey? Along with looking at distilling the navigation and distilling dashboards and all these kind of things that we're considering, we need to think about our settings. Here are the amounts of pages you have to move around to just interact with settings. Is all of this needed? By thinking about what is needed, we can think about what we really want to surface. Perhaps we just have one settings page and a lot of these things are advanced. That's sort of hiding things in a drawer though, right? 
I would argue we need to look at this further. What can we truly remove and take the strain of understanding from those first coming to this experience? To truly be experienced first, we need to be aware and think of mental models. To ensure a mental model is the way that we think. Common illustrations are if you're walking through a corridor and all the doors open in the same way and the last door doesn't, you hit your nose. That's a mental model changing. But if we think about the experience of a supermarket, who has gone into a supermarket thinking they know the aisle that the biscuits are on and they go to the aisle the biscuits are on and it turns out there's no biscuits there and they've moved the biscuits. I know that's happened to me quite a lot. When that happens, that's a broken mental model. We've all had these moments. And those moments make us feel stupid. But it's not us. It's the experience. We don't know that, though. And if a mental model fractures too much, not only does our trust go, but our anger rises. Because as humans, we really don't like being made to feel stupid. So beyond looking at specific techniques, and I would encourage everyone to start really thinking about this distilling and these paths and these stories that we're telling with our product. As a project, we need to collectively look beyond where we are really today. But how do we do that though? The first thing we really need to be thought about is, is it fit for the purpose? The fit could be for the human using it. And that's making it accessible or culturally fitting and right for their situation. It's also it's about making it work for the right purpose. In the past, this has been about someone consciously changing or interacting with an interface over having everything on. This is about creating an experience that adapts. It's one point not really fully explored yet and starting to kind of dabble in this. But a contextual interface avoids a lot of the issues of a everything on and a paradox of choice. So I'm going to add as a note, the blunt end of this is often what adapt gives adapting experiences. Kind of a bad name. And that's a giant list of options for a settings page. Even worse, a mode switch that you have to think about doing something and then think about clicking something. That's really a kind of friction in your mental model. What I am suggesting is an adaption, and that's natural without having to configure. The experience would be aware of the person, of the situation, and of the purpose. This probably sounds a little bit magical for a Saturday morning, but it really is possible. And it really is possible with the tools that we have. We, after all, we walk into different rooms for specific purposes, and our experiences should be just like that. Those using the experience don't have to be conscious about where things are. They are there for them. The tools are right by them when they need them. They aren't unexpected. And they also aren't scarily overthinking, because nobody likes an overly clever, freaky interface. Kind of like if you think about Goldilocks, that's the middle bear porridge. That just right experience. The perfect experience dance is really, really possible for us to create. Taking it even a step further to the device you are experiencing on or might in the future. I would say mobile first. This is about really being experienced first, fit for the purpose, the device that you're using this on. Where it just works on any device you happen to be interacting with. It isn't about squashing the desktop experience. It adapts and it distills and refines to fit the device that it's really being used on. Different needs need different experiences, not limited, reduced ghosts of interfaces. If we all looked, if we looked at many, many screens that people use most of the time, it's likely not everything in WordPress. This goes back to those stories, the pathways, the arcs. By focusing on tasks, we can reduce that always on moldable flows and focus on the best one, the fine, and ensure you get what you need when you need it. As I've mentioned, there's multiple ways to do things, and this just leads to confusion. We're designing for everything at all the same time. This means the learning curve is fast. For example, do we need to start on the dashboard? We need to ask these questions. 
is there a better star? Do we need to have the amount of things that we do in a sidebar? Maybe at the start you choose what you're going to use this for and it adapts, it fits to the purpose. Maybe there's no sidebar at all. These are ideas we need to start exploring beyond our level of sidebars and accordions and the WordPress kind of do like those as well. As a long-standing project, part of our practice really needs to be triage. This is where we can clear the channels and soothe those flows. Beyond this, looking honestly, critically, and with an open heart at our functionality and what we need. Do we really need everything today that we have? What is getting in the way? What could be done better? What truly is something that needs iteration? And part of this is being okay with extensibility. If the baseline experience is solid, we have those roots of extensibility. Beyond this, let's take a look at what we can refine and distill an existing interface. What isn't serving us well? What can we do today better and what can we iterate? These are all questions we should be asking. So currently I would suggest we don't really have a welcome mat in the WordPress experience. By starting to take a journey and kind of focus on the work that we do and that experience first mindset, it's really something that we can do. We can have that welcome mat that includes everyone. One of these experiments was tips within the editor and also we have like an onboarding in the editor. So we have a couple of these different things going now. But these are just a couple of little approaches. Because a welcome isn't just a guide. A wizard isn't a welcome alone. It's kind of a shyly useless gesture if it's not backed up with real magic. Wizards that don't do magic are just not great wizards, are they? We need to be able to see and try before committing and really explore the interface and know what we are going to be doing. For example, a tiny little way of doing this is you can preview a block in the editor so you can see what you might be able to use. This reveals what we will be able to pick. It removes that fog of surprise in the interface. Because when it comes to an interface, nobody likes surprises. They like delight, they like it working, and they like predictability, and they like their mental models to not be broken. So as I wrap up, I wanted to take a little moment to consider and really to think about putting experience back at the heart of everything we do. Because this isn't just the designers, and this isn't just a talk that will only be for them. And it isn't just about design. This is about performance. It's about function. It's about every aspect of the WordPress product. We need to build for the future, not just for today. This will involve considering what we do support, what we push forward, and what we have graceful and gentle and respectful fallbacks for. If the experience is truly adaptive, that means we should consider pushing forward whilst adapting to that which we support. By scaling to the park of interfaces and technologies, experimentation can lead to pushing beyond what we actually have today. There are so many things possible in an experience that a few years ago was just a dream. The plugins are great and things absolutely wonderful but they shouldn't be a requirement for a good experience. Out of the box, WordPress should have a warm welcome, a natural flow that leads someone through their first post, their first few weeks, and then if they want, into the world of extending to truly create their own WordPress world. By offering consistent tools, potentially even a design system, those extending can keep that consistent experience. They can go beyond it and not against it and not have to create these conflicting interfaces because there just isn't any tools or anything available for them to do this with. Everyone benefits here and not least those using it who don't have to play guess what this component does or guess what's going to happen when I click this. Those of us creating, those of us who've been around a little bit of time within WordPress, we really need to check ourselves because we probably not creating majority of this for ourselves. We need to that remember that first experience or try and hold that. Whenever we start a new feature, 
We need to start simple. Release often. And remember WordPress has actually been founded on iteration. Let's start embracing that again. Surface the thing you need right where you need it. And bring the experience simpler and to those who need it. In kind of knitting terms, we need to remember that first time we knit our first row or the time we made our first piece and that excitement. Whilst it's true that over time products get tangled, that doesn't mean that we should accept that and race to add new features, fix the most bugs and build more, higher, more complex. There's an honesty, a point of reflection that's needed to recognize that tangled ball of experience yarn. Whilst natural, it does need improving. The process is beginning across WordPress, and I would encourage us all to just start continuing to do that, to create truly a product for the years ahead, a product that puts experience at the heart and entangles its yarn. Thank you. Okay, so now is your chance to ask you all the difficult questions. Thank you, Tanya, very much. Thank you. Has anyone got a question they would like to ask? We've got ten, ten minutes or so. Neil. Thank you for that talk. Um, you work for Automatic, right? Uh, and what I was wondering is, like, um, I completely agree with you, but to what extent uh, are these changes going to happen through kind of qualitative testing versus quantitative analysis. I mean, we've got a lot of data about how people use things. Um, but I'm just curious about how that actually gets put into practice. In terms of yeah, it's, a, it's observing, right? The foundation is we can't create for the, that that we don't know. Um, it doesn't matter what company I work for for that, right? Like, it's about all of us. I think it's very easy. I use this term headspace, which is basically, it's very hard to design outside the space that we're in. We're in this body, in this head, right? But we do it. So there is usability testing that goes on at the moment, and we need to do more of that. We need to, at WordCamp Europe, there's been uh, testing tables. We need to do more and more of that. We need to listen, and we need to look at the support forums. They're, they're a gold mine of information. Every single contributor team is a gold mine of information. So it's about that. And going beyond just even the country we're in and our language is, is incredibly important. Um, we are building a product that is global. And we sometimes forget that when we're doing it. We, we make it for maybe our closest word camp, <laughs> or maybe the, the, the clients that we work for. So it's a very rambling answer I'm giving you, but I am so... I agree we need to look at any feedback that we get, any story to do this, and we distill and do that as part of it. It's a slower process doing that, but that's a really important process. And sometimes what that involves is putting something out there and seeing what happens with it. So we have this amazing feature in core feature plugins, so doing things like that. The design team, um, I can speak for that team, we, we have a awesome experiments plugin. So things like that are great because they're just a way of like going, I have this idea, I think it's kind of based on some research, but what happens if, oh, oh yay, right? Like, so more of that. And I think that's something we do as a community, and that's something that different companies can give back, uh, hosting companies can give information. So it's about us collectively as a project all doing that. Incredibly rambling answer, but I hope that helps. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions? Very interesting and very, you know, improving, improving lecture. Uh, I just wanted to, no question, but I just wanted to thank you that my day is made. I am in the right place because, say, one month ago I didn't know anything about WordPress. Mm -hmm. And I found it equally confusing and everybody is telling me that you don't need to do WordPress because the plugins will go away and things will stop, your site will stop working. But I am so glad that I am here. I'm going to make most out of it. So your story is the story we should all be listening to. Um, because 
and you can get close to it. So, I, yeah. I, I had a business plan. I, I'm from India. I, yeah. I talk to so many people on Upwork. But everybody is telling me a different story altogether. And finally, I landed up creating my own site. To whatever extent it is, it has products, WooCommerce, and I am not sure whether what, whatever I have done is correct or mm -hmm. wrong. And that is what I'm here to learn for. You know, I don't know. So one plugin tells me you can do this. Another one also tells me you can do this. I confused. I create. I invented a kind of word on Wikipedia, and they deleted my post because I, I that was not the correct approach. I didn't even know yeah. what visual editing is and what you know. Yeah. So it is confusing, and I think it's a very, very, very nice start to the video. There are so many people who are going to be coming and talking to you, I'll come and talk to you, and we can hopefully help you <laughs> and listen to you. Anybody else? Yes. Oh, I apologise if he's outside. This, is, this question is kind of outside the realms of what you do, but I'm interested in your opinion on this. So, if we're going to, if we want to extend these ideas out to, you said, you know, themes and uh, third-party plugins and things like this. At the moment, I would say a lot of the criticism that WordPress comes in for, you know, security issues and just looking to the plus and things mm -hmm. like that comes from, well, let's be honest, mainly plugins. And at the moment, not a huge amount happens to try and enforce these uh, themes and plugins to, to follow us the, the standardized design that Core puts into place even at the moment. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking if we're simplifying and uncluttering it, as you suggest, do you think we should be pushing more towards plugins and themes following that design as well? So, uh, I react so strongly to the word enforce, but that's me and that's a personal I thing. swear on me. Yeah, but I think everybody does. And I think why the reaction to that is because if I'm going to use an analogy like we're in an art space, right? So I'm going to use an analogy. If you have an art box and you have everything in it to create everything, you don't need to go to an art store. This is a Saturday morning <laughs> analogy, right? But, and the thing is, I think at the moment, we don't really have that good kit. So how can we expect some consistency when we have inconsistency in the base product itself? So... And, by having that consistency and by offering more tools and more awesome things that people can use, uh, consistent component styling, and this is something that is happening at the moment, refining things like maybe the color pickle, or refining things like the range control, and having these things available that you can pull in in your theme or your plugin, that by the nature improves. It's like a cascade effect. It's a CSS <laughs> in that sense, right? Um, so I, I think that happens, and it's about collectively looking at that. I don't think we should necessarily pause everything, spend four years on the design system, and then we're good to go, because the design system isn't a solve that solves everything. Unless we look at, we have to audit and we have to have a foundation that we build up. So I think we're on the path to doing that, but we can't expect someone. Uh, if you're a new plugin developer or a theme developer, you have to learn the way that we do things or plugins. So there's all this kind of, we need to sort out our house first and, and the core before we can do that. And I think it, it's happening, but it's a cascade. Also, a very kind of roundabout way of saying it, but I, I, I think we will, by the nature of having better in the core product and more refinement in the core product, that will happen. Okay, thank you, everybody, and thank you, Tammy, very thank much. Um, Chris, maybe it went rambling on too long at the start. Um, obviously, we're running late already. If anyone wants to come and find me, I'll be here all day, and I love talking to people. Please do. That's, that's why we're here, and that's why it's such a great event, a chance to actually talk to people after it. So, Tammy, thank you very much thank indeed. You.